Hey YouTube, this is just a follow up video to the build on the log splitter and I'm just going to show it in use. It did this whole big pile of logs in about an hour and five minutes, six minutes I think it was. Way quicker than I could have done it by hand anyway and it paid for itself in that job alone I reckon. So let's have a look at it in action and during the video I'll have a look at the discussion about some of the design points. You'll notice that the lock foot is rocking back at the boards a little bit along the longitudinal axis. The reason for that is it is not attached to the tractor. When it's attached to the tractor, of course it won't rock. But in this instance, I couldn't get the tractor out of the shed to bring the lock foot down. I did want to try to get these locks split, so I wheeled it down by hand and I used a piece of the log under one end of it just to stop it tipping too far. But as you can see, it rocks a bit. No big drama, it still works fine, uh, this looks a little bit odd. I've cut these logs at a good length to burn in our fireplace, so that means I don't need to use the full stroke of the ram, which makes the job a bit faster. I don't track the ram any more than I need to to put the next log in. On the pieces of log that were a bit hard for blade to get into, and there weren't too many of them, I'd have to say, I did find that if I tip the log up a little bit so that it's on a slight diagonal and the blade can start cutting in on a thinner section, that that works quite well in those circumstances. Although I would say that you'd have to be careful not to tip it up too much so that the log slips and flies off. I just wanted to show you these termites in the tree. Now, when we cut the tree down, it looked pretty bad on the outside. It looked as though it was about ready to fall down by itself. But when I had a look at it after cutting it down, the timber on the inside was pretty good, really. And I didn't notice any termites in it at that stage. And it's been on the ground for, oh, I guess maybe two, three months now. And we've got termites all through it. So I'm not sure whether they were there before and I missed them. But if they weren't, it just shows that it doesn't take long for termites to get into things and spread. During operation I did note that the oil temperature got a bit warm. I wouldn't say it was really hot, but it was what I'd consider probably overly warm, which thins it down a little bit and makes it less effective for hydraulics. I learned all this after the fact. The size of my hydraulic reservoir for the capacity of the pump is a little bit on the low side. The idea is to have more oil there, which gives you more bulk to heat up, and it doesn't heat up as much. My reservoir is a bit smaller than recommended. It should be at least half as big again, and that's on the bottom end of the recommendation. I could make it two to three times the size it is, and that would be within the recommended range. So that's another thing I learned about hydraulics. It's working, but if I did it again, that's probably the only major design change I would make, and that is to put on a bigger reservoir, or possibly add some sort of cooling system like a, an old radiator to allow the oil to be cooled a bit better. The other thing you can do if your oil is getting a bit warm and thinning down is to go with a thicker oil to start with, and that's the solution that I'm going to try first. Hopefully that'll be all I need to do, and I won't need to do anything about replacing this reservoir. But, as I said, if you decide to build one, uh, check into the reservoir sizing you need for the capacity of the pump that you're using. The reservoir capacity is usually some multiple of the number of gallons per minute that the pump will move. Now, I'm certainly not unhappy with the ram that I've got. It had a few problems when I first got it with a seal. The company was really good, supplied me with the seals, fixed it all up. So I'm really happy with this ram, but it's the first ram held together with rods that I've ever had of it, and I've used the welded variety. And I think if I were to do it again, I might consider paying the extra for a welded hydraulic ram. This tree's all hardwood, and the ram certainly up to the job of splitting it. There was only a couple of uh, pieces where I had to actually have two or three stabs at it before I was able to split the wood. 
And also, the blade held up well, in that I didn't harden the edge at all, and yet it didn't uh, chip or dent on the edge in cutting any of this. This video has been played back at 10 times normal speed, and the video duration of the actual splitting is 6 minutes and 49 seconds, so multiply that by 10, and the total time to cut all this timber was just over an hour. Pretty good effort, I thought. The engine's still a tad hard to start. I haven't quite figured out how to do that easily yet, but once running, it runs like a champion. I fly a light aircraft, and many years ago, the two aircraft were the same make and model, manufactured in the same year, and one of them you had to prime eight pumps, or it wouldn't start, and the other one, if you primed it any more than four pumps, you flooded it and it wouldn't start. So each engine is different and I'll understand the idiosyncrasies of this one before too much longer I hope. And just for the heck of it I decided to cut some pieces of wood across the grain. I selected some up to about uh, two and a half inches in diameter, that's uh, 65 millimeters thereabouts, and it didn't miss a beat doing that. Although on a couple of the thicker bits the end that I wasn't hanging on to flew off for a good distance, so I wouldn't recommend making a habit of doing this. Wings that I added to the side to catch the pieces as they were split worked wonderfully. There was only a couple of pieces that actually slipped off onto the ground. So I was very happy with that addition to the design. Well, I've tested it splitting some really massive logs here, or massive by the standards of what I've got in my yard. And it hasn't missed a beat. It's also handled some logs where the branches came out of, so they're pretty gnarly. And again, it went through them pretty easily. A couple of times I had to just watch where the grain was and try and guide the, uh, or rather make sure that the blade went down along the grain. But other than that, it's worked beautifully. That made very short work of all that wood. There's more of it over there. That was an hour's work, an hour and a few minutes, but now in four minutes. So that's pretty good, I couldn't have chopped that much by hand in an hour and four minutes, that's for sure. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I just remind you I'm not an engineer, but I have made plans for this log splitter available. If you'd like to have a look at them for educational purposes, you can download them from my website. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. I won't be doing any videos for the next couple of weeks because we're going away on holidays, but I'll return after that. So I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Until then.